Hey guys, Mr. Backwork here. This is part two of lesson 4.5, still looking at graphs of sine and cosine functions. Just one objective for this video, we are going to look at horizontal translations of those sine and cosine graphs. We've got our general forms for our sine and our cosine functions up at the top of the page here. We've already looked at what A and B do to the graph. In this video, we're gonna be focusing mainly on that C value but we're actually gonna to have to include that B value in with some of that stuff to help us out. So we're gonna look for what effect C is gonna have on the graph of our picture. And since there's addition or subtraction happening inside of our parentheses, we should recognize this as either a left or right shift. So some sort of horizontal shift. To figure out how far we're moving over, either left or right, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that bx minus c stuff that's inside of our parentheses, set it equal to zero and solve. We'll be able to go through and get x all by itself. We'll end up getting c over b. That thing is called a phase shift. And like I said, that's just telling us how far we're moving either left or right. Now when we're looking at these phase shifts, really what's happening is we're changing where our graph starts and where our graph ends. So in order to figure out what those values are gonna look like, okay, it says one cycle of our graph is gonna go from this first thing, that bx minus c equals zero, which is really what we did earlier, but that's gonna be the starting point of our graph. As far as the ending point to figure out where our graph is gonna stop for one full cycle, we're gonna take that bx minus c stuff again from inside of those parentheses and set it equal to two pi. So this will be the end point of our graph. So in our first example, we've got y equals the sine of x minus pi over four. Now we're still gonna do all that stuff with a and b that we did in the last video. We're just gonna add in this extra phase shift stuff. So if I take a look at my equation, I'm looking at that a value first. Remember, a is the number in front of our sign, and there's no number written here, which means there's an implied one. So if we're talking about the amplitude of our graph, it's just one. So on my graph, what I'm gonna do at one and at negative one, I'm gonna draw in that horizontal dotted line because that's where my graph is gonna be bouncing up and down between. Now our next thing was dealing with that b value and that helped us find the period of our graph. And b is the number in front of our x. Again, there's nothing there, so there's an implied one. In order to find the period of our graph, what we do is we take two pi over that b value. So in this case, we've got two pi over one and two pi divided by one is just two pi. Now remember, what we do with this two pi period is we wanna split it into four equal parts so we know how far apart these points are gonna be spaced on our graph. So I'm gonna take this two pi, divide it by four, and we'll end up getting pi over two. Now here's where we're gonna run into this phase shift stuff that we were talking about. In order to figure out what our phase shift is, is we take C and divide it by B. So our C value that we've got is this pi over four right here. So I'm gonna go pi over four divided by, earlier we said our B value was one. So this is telling me that our graph was shifted to the right, pi over four. Now to figure out where this is starting, remember we can go BX minus C equals zero. So we take that X minus pi over four equals zero, add the pi over four over to the other side, we get X equals pi over four. And we should notice that this phase shift that we found earlier and the starting point should be exactly the same. We're gonna start at pi over four on the graph. To figure out where our graph is going to end, I'm gonna take that same bx minus c stuff, so x minus pi over four, and set it equal to two pi this time. Now if we add this pi over four over to the other side, we're gonna need common denominators. So before I get started, I'm gonna make this eight pi over four, then if we add that pi over four, we're gonna get nine pi over four, so x equals nine pi over four is where our graph is going to stop. Now we need to start figuring out some points so we can plot them out and draw in the graph for this sine function. We said that we were gonna start at pi over four. So that's gonna be the first x value that I plug into this equation. Well, if I replace x with pi over four, then inside of our parentheses here, it's gonna say pi over four minus pi over four, and that's just zero. If we do the sine of zero, we should get zero back as the answer. 
Now, the lines on my graph represent pi values. So we got pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi. As far as pi over 4, that's just going to be 1 fourth of the way along the line here. So there's my first point at pi over 4. Now this is where things might start to get a little tricky. We said earlier that all of our important points were going to be spaced apart pi over 2. So what I want to do to find the next x value that I'm going to be plugging in is I want to add on this pi over 2. We started at pi over 4. If we add on pi over 2, well, we're going to need common denominators. Pi over 2 is the same as 2 pi over 4. So pi over 4 plus 2 pi over 4, our next important point is going to happen at 3 pi over 4. So then I'm going to go into my equation that we started with and just plug that in for our x value. So if we have 3 pi over 4 right here for x minus pi over 4, that leaves us with 2 pi over 4. And that's just the same thing as pi over 2. The sign at pi over 2 is 1. So now if we go back down to our graph, again, this is pi. 3 pi over 4 is just a little bit smaller than that. So we've got a point at 3 pi over 4, and we should be up at 1. Now we need to find our next x value that we're going to plug into our equation. Remember, they're pi over 2 apart. So just like I did on the last one, I'm going to add another pi over 2 to this x value. Well, pi over 2, we said earlier, was the same thing as 2 pi over 4. And 3 pi over 4 plus 2 pi over 4 gives us 5 pi over 4. And we're going to plug that into our equation for x. 5 pi over 4 minus pi over 4 would give us 4 pi over 4, which just reduces down to pi. And the sign at pi is 0. So at 5 pi over 4, we are down at 0. Again, next x value, we're going to add another pi over 2. Pi over 2 is the same as 2 pi over 4. 5 pi over 4 plus 2 pi over 4 is 7 pi over 4. If we plug that in for our x value in the equation, 7 pi over 4 minus pi over 4 would be 6 pi over 4, which reduces down to 3 pi over 2. And the sign at 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. So at 7 pi over 4, we're down at negative 1 right there. Our last x value that we're going to plug in should be the same as that ending point. I'm going to double check it just to be sure. I'm going to add on another pi over 2. 7 pi over 4 plus that pi over 2. We'll end up getting 9 pi over 4. Plug that in for x in the equation. 9 pi over 4 minus pi over 4 gives us 8 pi over 4, which is the same as 2 pi, and the sign at 2 pi is 0. So we'll plot that last point on our graph at 9 pi over 4, 0. And then I'm going to draw in my sine curve. So there is one full cycle of our equation. In our next example, we've got y equals 1 half sine of x minus pi over 3. I'm just going to do exactly the same thing I did on the last stuff. I'm going to start by finding this a value. So if we look in front of our sine, we've got 1 half. That tells me that our graph is going to be bouncing between positive a half and negative a half. So I'm going to draw in these guidelines to help me out. Next thing we look at is the period. So we want to figure out what our b value is. So we check out in front of our x. There's a 1. So we'll have to go with 2 pi divided by our b value. We get a period of 2 pi. And then remember, we want to split that thing into four equal parts. So we'll divide by 4. And all of those important points that we're going to have on our graph will happen pi over 2 apart from each other. Next thing on the list is that phase shift. So in order to do that, we go c over b. Our c value is right here, pi over 3. We've already talked about that b value a little bit. It's 1. So pi over 3 divided by 1, we just get pi over 3 as that phase shift. Figuring out our starting point, we take the entire stuff in parentheses. So our bx minus c, set that equal to 0 and solve. We'll add that pi over 3 over. So we get x equals pi over 3 as our starting point. 
For our ending point, we're going to take that same bx minus c stuff. So x minus pi over 3, but this time we're going to set it equal to 2 pi. Now when we add this pi over 3 over to the other side, we'll need common denominators. So this is like having 6 pi over 3. If we add another pi over 3, we'll get x equals 7 pi over 3. Now we're going to start getting ordered pairs that we can plot out. We said that our first x value we were going to use was pi over 3. So I'm just going to plug that into my equation. Pi over 3 minus pi over 3 is 0, and the sine of 0 is 0. And if we take a half times the 0, we're still going to get 0. So at pi over 3, we've got 0. Pi over 3 is going to be 1 third of the way along here. Now here's where it gets a little tricky. Our important points are pi over 2 apart from each other. So we have to take pi over 2 and add it on to this pi over 3. So we might need some common denominators to do that. I'm looking at the 2 and the 3, thinking maybe we go with denominators of 6. So pi over 3 would be like 2 pi over 6. Adding on this pi over 2, well, we would make that 3 pi over 6. So our next x value is going to be 5 pi over 6. And if we plug 5 pi over 6 in here, if we take 5 pi over 6 minus pi over 3, that is pi over 2. Sine of pi over 2 is 1, but if we multiply by this half out in front, we just get a half. So at 5 pi over 6 on our graph, we're up at this maximum value of 1 half. And now we need to find our next x value. So I'm going to add on another pi over 2, or I guess 3 pi over 6. So if we take 5 pi over 6, add on 3 more pi over 6, that would be 8 pi over 6, but we can reduce that down. 8 pi over 6 is the same thing as 4 pi over 3. So now we're going to plug that in. If we take 4 pi over 3 minus pi over 3, we get 3 pi over 3, and that's just the same thing as pi. The sine at pi is 0, and 0 times a half is 0. So 4 pi over 3, we're back down at 0. Now if this was 8 pi over 6 and we add on another 3 pi over 6, our next x value should be at 11 pi over 6. Plugging that in, 11 pi over 6 minus pi over 3, we're going to end up getting 3 pi over 2. The sine at 3 pi over 2 is negative 1, and negative 1 times this 1 half out in front is negative 1 half. So at 11 pi over 6, so just a little short of 2, we are down at negative 1 half. We need one more point, so I'm going to add on this 3 pi over 6 again. So 11 pi over 6 plus 3 pi over 6 is 14 pi over 6. And if we reduce that down, we get 7 pi over 3. And we were hoping that was our answer since we said earlier that was going to be our stopping point. So plug 7 pi over 3 in for our x value. 7 pi over 3 minus pi over 3. We get 6 pi over 3, but that just reduces down to 2 pi. The sine at 2 pi is 0. Half of 0 is still 0. So at 7 pi over 3, we're back at 0, and then I'm going to draw in this sine curve. So there's the picture for one full cycle of our equation. I actually want to wait to do examples 3 and 4 in class, so just hold off on those for right now. Please remember to fill out the Google form linked in the description down below, and thanks for watching.